So I have here two different things that I managed to pick up. One is an Echo Dot. I picked this up refurbished for $15. This is the power cable. And the other is oh, this really awesome retro style CD player. So this does actually have a working CD player. It's got all these ugly buttons, which at some point I will be removing. And it does have a little LCD screen in here. Um, but most importantly, I want to hook these speakers up to the Alexa. And I want to get the Alexa in here. The last little piece of this is it does have an uh, old iPad holder. And I happen to have an old iPad that I can fit in here, but I'm going to remove this. Now this does have a nice little lift and some things in here. So this is probably where I'm going to end up ultimately putting the Alexa. But let's open it up and let's see what's inside and let's figure out how we can work with this. I have a jar where I'm going to put all the screws so I don't lose them. The back just lifts off. Got even more things on the inside. Using an old Chinese food container to hold all the screws so I don't lose them. Seems the last owner left a CD in here, so I'm going to pop that out. High School Musical. Seems I got this from a kid. Okay. So now, taking a look, I have the power here. Now the power is being split and sent here. And then continues all the way into the board. So what I want to do here is essentially tap into here and power. So I don't want to have to plug in my USB as well. Um, this just seems excessive. So I'd like to see if there's a way I can hook into this board. Um, and I doubt it's just going to give me a USB connector. But um, if I can hook these up to here, then I should be okay. We've got our speaker wires over here. So we have one set of speakers. We have one set of speakers connected here. And the other set connected here. We just want to get this main unit out. So I want to get started by saying I actually don't really know too much about what I'm doing here. Um, I'm really just kind of winging it. And I know that I need power. And I know that I'm going to need around 5 volts because that's what USB is using. And um, I know that I'm going to need audio in some way, shape, or form. So either I need to directly connect into the audio um, or I need to find some sort of USB jack or audio jack that I can use. And I also need to go directly to the speakers. So I'm going to remove everything first just so I can get a better look at it. And I'm going to also have to disconnect the cables. These side things come out. And ultimately, I'm just going to disconnect everything and take everything out of the box. So right now, I'm really just trying to see what I have to work with. There's a whole lot of screws, so I am slowly and surely taking out every single screw. Um, I found the power switch. That's what the things were going to. Um, so the power goes to the on-off switch, which then goes to the power supply. And the power supply outputs right to the board um, with adjusted voltage. So I could tap directly into the power, and that was my original thought, was really just to take the USB and plug it in um, in serial or in parallel so that it would just be directly connected in, uh, and then I'd just run the USB cable. So I removed all the housing and there was a whole bunch of cables that were connected. Um, I looked and noticed happily that the cables all had either different numbers of pins. So one had three, one had four, one had five. So it'd be pretty obvious what went where. Um, some of them were even glued. So I couldn't remove those um, and I did my best. So once I had the board, I found that there was one very interesting connection. Um, and that was the connection from the board down to the iPod docking station. Um, I also had a 
a headphone jack, which is output. So I was hoping to find maybe an input jack that I could get into, um, but there was no aux in, um, which some devices have, which would have made things a lot simpler. Um, and at this point, I was kind of just looking at all the pins and seeing what I could possibly tap into and make use of. And there was an iPod pin that was going in. And I also noticed this pin, now black and red usually mean power. Red is out, black is in or ground. Um, so that gave me good hope. And I was hoping to find something really useful. And I found a nice little note on there that did say iPod power plus five volts and ground, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted five volts. So I looked even deeper in, and that was where uh, the connector went to the display board. So that was all the inputs and outputs. And if I want later on to hack into that and have outputs, so if the Echo can use USB and provide information as to what you know what data it's playing, what the song is, uh, that's that would be how to do that. But for now, that goes well beyond the scope of what I want to originally get done. Um, so my focus really is going to be on figuring out the pinout for that USB. So I took a look at my USB charger just to make sure, and the charger wants um, 5 volts. So, or at least, you know, when it plugs into the wall, that's what it's going to do is 5 volts out to the USB. So as long as the connector I connect it to is 5 volts, then everything's going to be fine. So I found this awesome pinout diagram. And the really important thing was... Orange was my ground, black is the red channel, and then the left channel. So what that told me is the top three, at least in this connector, are going to be my audio ground, my left, and my right channel. So that is going to be what I plug into the audio jack, because an audio jack has a ground, a left, and a right channel. So that was all I needed. And that meant that the others were um, left over for power. So I unscrewed everything, um, and I removed the mounting jack. Um, this is the thing that did the flap. Now the flap had a bajillion screws and they were really tiny and hard to get to, but I thankfully video edited all them out. And that left me with the iPod connector. And the connector, once I removed the faceplate, uh, actually had a really nice pin diagram on it. And it had some information there as well. Um, but once I knew what the pin diagram was, and I also knew the white cables on the left, those went to the display, so I wasn't really going to play with that. It was the cables that were just on the right, um, the black, red, orange, etc. Those were the ones that I was going to be using for uh, the audio jack and power. So I first cut and labeled the wire as audio, um, or at least the three that I knew were the left, right, and ground. Uh, and then I had to cut the power ones so that I could use those as well. So back on the inside, I was looking at the other side of the cable and I wanted to figure out, so there was two power and two ground. Um, and that confused me because I was like, maybe one's a 12 volt. And when I looked further in on the pins, it really just told me there was power. Um, it didn't tell me which ones. Now it said both were power. So it said um, plus voltage um, on the reds and then blacks were ground. So I, you know, just kind of had to assume and hope that they were both the same, but I'd do some trials. So I closed everything back up, closed up the bottom. Now I did not add every screw again. Um, and that's because chances are I'm going to have to take everything apart again. Um, and I don't want to have to undo every screw. So flipping things over to the front, we now have our connector and our parts. Let's peel that price off. Now I didn't actually pay $34.99. I got it half price. Um, $34 still would have been a good find. It works perfectly, um, but I got it half price. So thumbs up to half price. So I took an old audio jack. So first I tried a really cheapy one. Uh, this one didn't have a ground and its connectors were just really bad. So I ended up scrapping it. I'm getting a proper audio cable. So now we needed to free the rest of our cables and I cut back the shielding. Um, I didn't have a lot of access to work with. I would always like to have access cable because I expect to make mistakes. 
but um, I didn't have a lot of room for mistakes, and thankfully I didn't make a lot in this project, so um, I'll consider that a win for myself. But using my trusty Leatherman, which is not the best tool, but it's a tool that I have, and sometimes you got to make do with what you have. So I cut up the shielding. Um, you want to be careful, the wires are pretty thin. And then um, I just stripped the front of the wires. Now I did use a little mini scissors. Uh, if you have a wire stripper, that is the much significantly better way to do it. And after you strip the wires, there we go. Just really gentle and you turn it around. Um, you, can, you can cut the cable and I have very often cut the inner wires um, doing this but you know what if that's the only tool you have at hand um, and I did order wire strippers they just hadn't come in yet um, so I did manage to strip all of those wires and then I split them out keeping everything else away this was the audio jack that I finally went with. Um, this is a proper audio jack. It has the left and right channels on the left and right, and that big long one is your ground. Uh, that's a much easier to attach with. I could clamp it if I really wanted to. Um, I chose to solder. And once the wires were set up, so I started with the ground because the ground is the bigger connection, and I hooked that in. Now I did tin the wires beforehand. I kind of cut that out of the video. That's not exactly exciting. And if you're looking for tips on how to best tin wires, don't look to me. Uh, there are much smarter, better people to do that. Um, so I set up my helping hands to hold the audio jack and hold the wire. And then I did my solder job. I have a really bad soldering iron that is really dirty. It did. It was. Uh, it was a. It was a process. So let's just put it this way. Um, don't get your soldering tips from me. Uh, there's much smarter people. Adafruit has a really great thing. I also forgot the uh, the jack. Um, the cover. The cover should have been slid onto the wires, but I didn't remember it. So I added a few extra layers of electrical tape. And now was the test. Did it work? Now, because I am overdubbing this, you're not actually going to get a chance to hear the radio. Um, but the way my mic is set up, it wouldn't accept the audio anyway because it's coming from a different direction. And you wouldn't hear anything anyway. So uh, ultimately, I tested to make sure the radio worked in the first place, and the radio did work. Um, and then I had my audio cable, and my audio cable, I plugged it in, and it, it worked. Um, and... For anyone who has ever done anything with programming, with electronics, anything like that, things don't work on the first try. That's just not how it works. Like, I expect to fail. I expect to fail two, three, four, five times before I get it right. This just worked. It was beautiful and amazing. Um, so now that I had that done, what I needed to do was free the cables, free the display cables. Um, and those I just kind of hid in the box. And then I needed to free the power cables. Now unplug when you're touching or messing with any power even if it's low power unplug everything so i stripped everything and then i tested them with a motor um now this is not the smartest thing to do um but i wanted to see because we had two reds and two blacks i wanted to see if the reds any of them were higher voltage so um using a motor higher voltage higher speed uh and both of them seem to go be going at the same speed so once I confirmed that both wires, the red wires and ground wires were good, uh, I took two of them and just capped them off and I put those away safely. Then I had the red wire and the black wire, which I kept available. So those were the ones I was going to use for my USB. And I took a USB cable that I didn't particularly like and I cut it up. And this is the first USB cable I have cut up. I've seen a bunch of videos of people doing it but it had a whole bunch of shielding, a whole bunch of junk in the inside, and then it had four wires. So the four wires are power, ground, and then you've got one for transmit and one for receive. So I cut off the transmit and receive because we won't be using those, we're just using power. And the only things that would be left is going to be my power and ground. So in this case, the blue and white or green or white, um, I forget what color they are. It's kind of hard to see in this video. I think it's green and white. Um, green and white are the data 
and the black and red are your power and ground. And thankfully, uh, everything is color-coded, so red goes to red, black goes to black. Again, when you're doing anything with power, unplug it. So I tinned the wires, uh, I soldered the wires, and I used um, conduit, the uh, heat, heat, heat shrink wrap. So the heat shrink wrap, after I... After I soldered everything together, I put the heat shrink wrap over the solder and just used a handheld lighter to shrink it on and just kind of reinforce. One, it keeps the connection good, and two, it keeps it from shorting. Did the same thing with the red wires, same thing with the shrink wrap. Now the shrink wrap, if, I, if you have a heat gun, that, that's the way to go, um, but it works pretty well with a, a low, low flame. Then electrical tape. Just get everything nice and clean. You don't want that to break. You don't want it to pull. Um, and yeah, so that was that. And then the final test, I plugged it in. Then I had to plug in the radio. And then you also have to plug in, you have to put it to iPod mode. And that gave it power. And again, it worked the first time. Um, that doesn't normally happen. And in future videos, you'll see this is going to fail for me. But it worked. And then I plugged it in. And that worked as well, because we already tested that. Now, the one quirk is that sometimes Alexa, or at least the Echo Dot, gets a little iffy when you have the audio plugged in and unplugged, and it will try and sense if there is an audio jack plugged in and then not or you know send data. So if I have the radio off or it's not set to iPod, then nothing will come out of it, um, even though it's connected. So you just have to make sure that the thing is stuck on audio. And, you know, then it just kind of works. So I did some tests here. I asked it to play Pandora, and I plugged it in and unplugged it. Um, and it worked. Again, the audio wasn't even picking up the music anyway, so there's not much to come on. But that that was it. That was my build. Um, I have it set to iPad because it's iPad dock. Um, but everything works, so the volume worked, which is great because it was tapping into essentially the audio jack. Um, and so that was it. So that was my video on taking an iPad docking station and turning it into something more modern that has a USB connector and an audio connector. So now any device or phone can charge and connect to it. Um, I can play that, and I hope you like that. Um, if this is content you like and this is the kind of format you like, please let me know in the comments. If you don't like it or you have suggestions, let me know in the comments. If there's something else you'd like to see, comment. Um, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like and feel free to subscribe as well so you can see my new content. There's going to be a lot more like this. Um, it's going to be a little bit more programming, a little bit more hands-on with Arduino type stuff, but I'm also going to have projects where I you know, retrofit things that are out there. I do have, if you want, a super short five-minute explainer video which only shows the nuts and bolts of what you really need. Um, that video is available as well in a link below. Um, so you can just get you know the quick overview if you want to do this yourself and you don't want to have to watch the whole video again. Um, and I hope to do that with all of my content. So again, thank you for watching. This is my first video. It's probably been a little bit longer than it should. Um, but I really hope you like and enjoy. And thank you so much and have a great day.